Kia ora everybody, it is Thomas from the History of Aotearoa New Zealand podcast coming back to you uh, from the comfort of my bathroom um, because for some reason um, I enjoy um, recording here um, against this nice lovely backdrop of a wooden wall. So if you are seeing this, uh, it means that I successfully managed to record this, edit it and upload it to YouTube. Hooray! That's great! If you're not seeing this, then I guess this is just a weird thing that I'm doing in my bathroom. But why are we, why are we here? What are we doing? Well, as you, know, or as you might know, uh, we do have a uh, Patreon for the podcast and um, as part of that, um, some of you out there, lovely people, uh, give me a bit of money for doing the podcast, which is great, and thank you very much. Doubly thank you very much, because the reason that we're recording this is because of you people. Um, because the very thing that I am recording this on is a GoPro. Um, so I used a bit of the Patreon money, as well as some of my own money, uh, to purchase a GoPro and some other stuff, um, so that we can um, go out and record some things. In particular, um, I am going to uh, I'm going to Picton uh, towards the end of next month to look at some ships as part of the Tuia 250 stuff. So, for anyone who doesn't know, this year, or at least the year that I'm recording this, which is 2019, uh, is the same year, or it's 250 years since uh, Captain Cook uh, arrived in New Zealand and had a bit of a you know go around um, New Zealand. And as part of that, the government did some. Um, interesting kind of uh, celebrations all across the country, one of which is a flotilla of ships um, that have uh, sailed down from um, the North Island and gradually making their way down the country, kind of following the same route that Cook took. And as part of that, um, there is a replica Endeavour, which is the ship that Cook took on his first uh, voyage. Um, and there is also some Waka, I think three uh, Waka, um, that are basically like, you know, Polynesian ships uh, that you might have seen perhaps during the Great Migration period or the period where Polynesians were uh, colonizing and discovering um, all of those um, you know islands and stuff you know way back in the way back um, you know in those first couple of episodes that we talked about on the podcast so that's kind of why I brought the GoPro is it's not well not just for that but also for um, you know when we go to other historical sites and that kind of thing um, but of course We've got to give it a bit of a hoon, right? We've got to, we've got to test it out, we've got to figure out how it works. Um, so today, what I'm going to do is we're going to go to Zealandia. Now, Zealandia is a uh, predator-proof uh, or predator-free kind of eco-sanctuary. Um, so they have a predator-proof fence all the way around uh, the uh, site. Um, and that's basically a big-ass fence um, that's got a overhang bit so that nothing can climb up. And it goes down, I think, about one metre into the ground. Um, and that stops anything from burrowing underneath. So there are no predators within it. And of course, there's a whole bunch of native New Zealand birds inside. Um, so we're going to go there, we're going to do a bit of recording, see kind of what happens, kind of give a GoPro a hoon. So this edit is super rough. I do apologise, I'm a podcaster, I'm not a video editor. So we're going to give it a bit of a hoon. And then hopefully we can, once we kind of figure out how this all works, we can then go out and look at some ships next month and do some other things, um, you know, planning to record in um, some other places around New Zealand, you know, historical sites, you know, maybe show you some other um, eco sanctuaries or uh, birds in New Zealand and all sorts of other stuff. So the whole idea is that we're going to, uh, yeah, show you some cool stuff, um, which would be really, really cool. So it is a pretty cracker day out there. I've chosen a really good day for it, which is awesome, I was a bit worried. Um, so I'm going to head off um, to go to Zealandia, um, and I will see you there. Once again, thank you very much to the patrons who have quite kindly donated um, and have really made this possible. Um, so thank you, thank you, thank you um, once again. But I'm going to head off and we'll see you at Zealandia. So I'm just on my way to Zealandia now. It's been about an hour um, of walking since I, uh, since I recorded that intro. So hopefully I've placed this directly after that. You might be able to hear a siren in the background. Um, but the thing I've noticed just kind of on my way here is uh, the, this fence. So hopefully you can see that. There we go. So pretty cool, pretty cool looking fence. It's made out of um, Navy New Zealand tree. Wouldn't know which one, sorry. I'm not a plant guy, I'm an animal guy. <laughs> um, but from what I understand, this is the sort of thing that Māori pa would be made of, that their walls at least would be made of. Um, obviously apart from these uh, metal bits. 
Um, but yeah, so this is kind of, at least from my very minimal research about that at this point, this could potentially be very similar to what the walls of a Māori pa in pre-European and, you know, sort of just European times uh, could have looked like, so that's quite cool. But anyway, I'm going to keep walking to Zelandia, I'm about probably 10-15 minutes away, um, so hopefully we'll get to keep see some cool birds soon. See you then. Alright, so we made it. Hooray! So we had to go through, all the way through the normal uh, stuff, so you can see all this here, so all the reception and stuff. <coughs> Excuse me, so you can see this thing here. That is, as I mentioned in my house, the predator proof fence. So these things are really fucking expensive. Uh, there's something like a thousand dollars for every like less than a kilometre or something ridiculous. So as we mentioned before, you can see there, you might not be able to quite see that. I can't get too close to it, otherwise it kind of defeats the purpose. But there's that overhang on it, and then that is what stops things from climbing over. And then it goes about one meter beneath the ground, and that stops things from getting underneath. So we've just walked a little bit further up from that lake, and we've got some cool uh, things. So this is kind of, not quite, this is kind of what I end up actually doing for my day job, which is a whole bunch of different traps. Um, this one in particular, the most popular one. It is the Dock 200. As you can see in here, rat comes in, or stoke comes in here, and he's after that egg, and then he gets hit by one of these traps. Extremely powerful, extremely gnarly, um, and pretty effective, but not very nice if the animal doesn't get hit uh, properly, which is uh, unfortunately not often, but more often than you probably like. Um, let's see another version of it here. So that's it, almost set up. They're in a bit of a state of disrepair at the moment, and that's one that's been set off. So that grill comes down and gives them a right old whack and uh, squishes them. So that's good for stoats and, uh, and rats. Uh, possums require a bit more effort. Uh, they use a Tim's trap, uh, often, often use a Tim's trap, um, which is basically a yellow bucket with a thing that wraps around the neck and strangles it. Um, again, not a nice way to do it, but uh, one of the most humane ways that we do know how to do it. Um, apart from poison, of course, so there are things like 1080 um, and other uh, poisons. So, you probably can't see this because I know you're looking at me, but four. Look at that view. So these are the sorts of things our native New Zealand birds like to hang out in, trees and whatnot. There is a duck down there, that is a mallard duck. I don't give a shit about them. <laughs> We're going to see some cool stuff. Um, hopefully, there is a boat down there as well. I don't know if you can see that, but there is a boat down there as well. We're not going to take that to walk. Um, so it doesn't actually go that far, it just goes up and down the lake apparently to the lady at the desk. Um, so we're going to go all the way up, um, sort of around there, um, and just see what we can find. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be great. So um, a, lot of, a, lot, a lot of native New Zealand plants. I can hear some native New Zealand birds. I don't know if you can hear that. But there's some tui and a variety of other things. It's going to be awesome. So let's go see what we can find. Now, I don't know if you can hear that, but that is the call of a korumako, I think I pronounced that correctly, uh, which is in English is the bellbird. Um, so that's not a real bellbird. Um, this is this little corner that I come across on the trail. Um, it's got a whole bunch of these uh, little panels. You can push the button and it tells you, it, you know, it, it, plays, it plays the call. So let's, um, little spotted kiwi. But the cool thing is it doesn't come out of that. They've set up, you can see some of them hanging around, but they've set up speakers in this, in this little kind of pocket on this hill. And you can hear them, hear them coming from the, from the, from the trees. So this is a North Island Robin. 
No? Oh, there he is. He's coming from over there somewhere. What about the hee hee, the stitch bro? White head. I don't know this one. This is not threatened, that's probably why I don't know it. <laughs> ah, yes, and the tiki, the North Island Saddleback. It's absolutely amazing. So, if you can imagine this is this kind of terrain, I mean, this is a bit of a hill, but if you think. All across the North Island, all across the South Island, this is the kind of terrain, these are the kind of noises that both Māori and Pākehā were hearing all the time, except it was louder. You know, Joseph Banks does say, you know, it was quite deafening when he went, and, you know, we do know that, you know, a lot of species of birds um, were already extinct by the time uh, Europeans turned up here in New Zealand. So, if you can imagine all of that kind of stuff, but it's just an absolute deafening in this kind of environment. And of course this would be way thicker um, you know back back in the day so it's it's quite remarkable what uh, both Māori and Pākehā were doing uh, you know to basically tackle the elements against this kind of terrain and hearing that kind of stuff you know calls that aren't, aren't heard anywhere else in the world uh, so it's it's quite amazing when you come out here and just, even just fake ones I mean you know we, we haven't even seen anything any real birds yet and it's already pretty worth it. So it's, um, yeah, it's pretty cool. Let's, uh, let's move on. That's exciting. I didn't realize these guys had Pākehā here. So if we're lucky, you might see some Pākehā. So basically, they're just really, uh, just like real chungus, real fat birds. So they're really amazing. So we've got, um, yeah, Pukiko is what most people see around, and they're just, the swampings. Fuck them. Who cares about who cares about Pukiko? They're um they're also in Australia, so we don't we don't care about them. But Takahe, if we can see some Takahe, that'd be pretty cool. So these are what you call wetter hotels. Um, see, there's different different styles of these um, that you can have um, that different people have. Sometimes they're just little boxes that you open up, but these ones look to be um, like actual pieces of uh, of um, like tree trunk. So if we open them up. <laughs> around here somewhere, oh just like that doesn't look like anyone's home close them back up for when the weather want to come back Just a spider. Gold. Yeah, so that is the ass of a tree wetter. So he's a native New Zealand insect. Um, the bigger ones, the, the wetter punga, I believe is what they're called, um, the giant, wet, giant wetter, uh, they occupy the same niche as rodents. So very, very cool. So we'll put him back in. He can have a snooze, but we do have another one here. So let's have a look. Oh, there you go. That's the whole hog. Oh, 
and there's the underside of one. So this is pretty cool because you can see this guy here, or lady. This is a lady, I'm pretty sure, because you can see she's got this big old spiny thing at the back. The male, you can see, does not. So that's pretty cool. We've got comparison there for each of them. Bloody brilliant. Let's close this back up. Again, these guys are quite dark. They're nocturnal, so I've got to close them back up again so that they feel nice and safe. Coming up here, this is this is the big stuff. Apparently, they're peeing out here. See some tuatara. I don't know how well you can see that, but that is a real tuatara. It's a very young one. Let me get a little bit closer. I don't want to get too close, I don't want to freak him out. Now, you may have heard that lady who just walked past said the boys have the spines, the girls don't. It's not quite true. Girls do have spines, they're just quite severely reduced. The thing about this though is, by that logic, this is a male. That's not correct. Of course we know that tuatara don't get a gender until they're about 20 years old. So, this one actually will be an it. It won't be, won't be anything. So this one's actually, I mean the ones that we had were Ooh, the ones that I looked after were probably about 10 years old. They were about double, triple the size, so this is a very young tuatara. Very, very young. That's amazing. So that is a wild, nearly as wild as you could get, unless you were to go somewhere. Uh, somewhere like Stevens Island or, or something like that. It is absolutely fantastic. Bloody amazing. So this thing, this guy, lady, woman, man, whatever he's going to turn into. He's probably about less than 10 years old. He's going to last for 200. Big one here. Nice and green. It's probably an old guy, an old girl, potentially. It's hard to tell. The spikes on the back don't tend to give a hugely great indication, but generally males have larger spines on the back. Potentially also shed his skin recently. That's what makes him nice and green. That is a big old, that's a big old tuatara. That is a nice, that is a nice adult right there. <laughs> Bloody amazing. I don't know if you caught that, but that was a kaka that was feeding up in the trees. Just basically jumped down. Looked like it was about to land on our heads. Just awesome. Absolutely awesome. Pretty sure uh, was no, not one of these. That's a that's a rifleman. Um, but I'm pretty sure that was a North Island uh, North Island uh, robin. So that's where I'm looking for. Absolutely amazing. <gasps>
けじゃん Close. Fair enough. <laughs> we'll leave him to it. So, as we're talking about the robin, we get a kurimako, bellbird. Amazing. This is all basically in the middle of Wellington. You know, hours walk, probably 10 15 minute drive from city centre. Bloody fantastic. Sites. Shelter was needed for workmen, coal and building materials during the construction of the upper dam. Flattened rectangular areas are all that remain as evidence of these buildings swallowed up by the regenerating bush. Holy shit. So, it's a nice bucket there. But it looks like here is potentially where a hut was where these guys were hanging out to build this dam. Potentially there's a hut over there as well. Or at least a replica of one. Some bird feeders over there. Kind of looks like one. There's a whole bunch of reading here we could do, but don't want to read too much of it. So I've just been talking to myself, looking at the map at where I want to go next. And this noisy bastard comes and interrupts me. shots are not going to be the best but hopefully they are enough to kind of capture what we're seeing but we'll leave him to his to his calling to his feeding so the kind of thing about Tui is the story goes that during uh, one of the stories about Kiwi I think it was uh, Kiwi had a problem I don't quite remember what the problem was um, but he went to all these different birds um, to try and uh, get them to help. Um, and a lot of the birds refused um, for various reasons and, and that kind of stuff. And basically the gist of it was, at the end, uh, Tane Mahuta, I think it was, so the god of the forest, or the Atua of the forest, the deity of the forest, um, he, as kind of a punishment, uh, basically said to Tui, since you're a coward, I'm going to put white feathers uh, on your chest or on your chin, kind of, you know, right there that you probably hopefully saw. And so that's why, we're it's the explanation for why to have the white feathers on their, kind of on their chin, you know. It seems like a really random feature to have compared to, you know, the rest of their body is black and kind of bluey and that kind of stuff. So that explains why they've got this kind of weird kind of white feathers underneath their chin is because uh, Tane Mahuda uh, said that they were cowards. So quite an interesting uh, kōrero or uh, kind of story or, or something like that. So yeah, very, very cool. So we've just stopped uh, at a little bench, um, just sort of in the middle of the track that I'm doing. Um, it's probably still a wee way to go yet, so I'm probably still at least at least a half hour off from uh, getting back to the actual uh, kind of the actual lake 
and the the uh, kind of area where you know all the the, the tuatara that we saw earlier and and the, the weather hotels and stuff we're still quite some distance away from there um, so we're probably still at least 40 minutes to an hour before we actually get back to the visitor center itself um, so yeah but I've just stopped here um, just to have a have a few sammies um, you know it's about uh, I think it's, it's uh, yeah about quarter past two in the afternoon um, absolutely cracker day as you can see so it's been really really good so far um, we've seen a lot of um, birds I mean you've been following you know you already know so yes we've seen a lot of cool stuff so far um, and yeah hopefully we can um, see some other cool stuff uh, on the way back um, but if we don't that's okay that's all you know that's all part of it um, we'll just have to uh, yeah just enjoy um, the um, the wilderness as it were um, you know just enjoy the trees and the sounds I don't know if you can hear that but there's lots of lots of birds um, you know just all around so I thought this was a good spot to, to kind of stop and just have a few have a, have a bit of a refuel so um, I'm gonna eat my semis um, and then we'll uh, after that we'll uh, continue on our way oh excuse me alrighty we're full of semis back on the road I know you probably can't see that but just sort of out there pretty sure I saw a couple of fear which are blue ducks they seem to have disappeared now though no there they are they've just popped back up so you probably can't see that but probably a bit far away but they're diving under so I'm pretty sure there's a couple of blue ducks out there which is really cool That was a hee hee, hopefully you saw that, uh, but another one on the bucket list I haven't seen before, so awesome, awesome. As it turns out, all of the history stuff, was it, well, not, not those, but, <laughs> but all the history stuff uh, was actually a bit right back at the start. Um, so hopefully this has been interesting for some of you. Um, I know some of you on Twitter are bird nerds, so, um, Hopefully there's been an interesting for you. Hopefully we've captured some good footage. Um, we'll see in the edit when I actually go back home and have a look at all the stuff that I got. Hopefully the audio is okay. Didn't notice about halfway through that as soon as I turn away, it's really hard, difficult to hear me. So we'll see how that goes. Um, but yeah, this was meant to be just a bit of a, a bit of a test run of GoPro and how it works and how to operate it and that kind of stuff. So I was to show you hopefully some cool stuff. So hopefully at least there's something in there that was interesting. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna. Um, go home now um so yeah so it was real good fun i've never been here before definitely will be back but um yeah hopefully you guys enjoyed it as well so i'm gonna go home um so until next time hi to hockey to my see you next time and apologies for the the shit camera at the end